the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Are we there yet? How much longer? On summer road trips, little passengers in the back seat and weary drivers in the front seat all tend to ask these questions, as I did too in our old Buick station wagon growing up. It's exciting to arrive at the destination, but the travel can be tough and tiring. The readings of today's Mass speak about our life's destination in heaven and how we must travel to get there. St. Peter's Epistle is written for the early Christians who will soon face persecution under the Emperor Nero. The first Pope encourages his flock. The Apostle speaks of the eternal glory in heaven with Christ, glory that we are all called to share in. But to be worthy of such a happy reward, the soul must first resist the devil. Satan is like a roaring lion, seeking to destroy the spiritual life. The devil tempts us to greed, gluttony, and impurity. And so we must be sober and temperate in our appetites and desires. That cunning lion, he seeks to trick us with his lies, not unlike the falsehoods in the media and the so-called woke culture today. And so we must be watchful, we must be prudent to discern the truth. Like a big bully, the devil roars today. He is roaring through so many talking heads as he aims to intimidate and to demoralize. While the devil tries to strip us of our will to resist evil, he also wants to rouse us to an angry reaction which will only defeat the cause of truth and charity which we seek to promote. Like the Christians of the first century, we can and we will overcome the devil today by making an act of faith. An act of faith in the divinity of Christ and the divinity of the church which he founded at the cost of his precious blood. The Apostles' Creed is our shield which protects us from demonic lies. The Word of God, taught to us in the liturgy and doctrine of the church, is our double-edged sword in the spiritual combat for the salvation of our souls. If we don't grow in faith by prayer, if we don't do good reading and spiritual exercise, we will fail in the faith. Our children will lose it, and our souls will never make it to our heavenly destination. Cui resisti te fortes in fide. So let us then be strong, resisting the devil by practicing a deeper faith. St. Peter then goes on in his epistle to admit that the faithful will have to suffer for a time. Modicum is the Latin word. It implies that these sufferings are relatively small and short-lived in comparison with those of hell. The apostle focuses not on the suffering itself, no, but rather upon the help which God will give us to bear with that suffering. Did, did you notice those most consoling words in the epistle? The God of all grace will himself perfect you and strengthen you and see you through to your purpose. Most consoling words that you and I should read every day. If we do our best to suffer faithfully and to suffer patiently, God will supply for our deficiencies. His divine grace will complete in us the spiritual work we try to do. The strength of Christ is stronger than our weakness, and he will carry us above and beyond our limitations. So do not fear failure, but cooperate with Christ. Trust in the power of his grace. He will see us through to that eternal glory of the heavenly destination. And so as we wonder about what is coming up for us in the future, 
what is coming up around the bend on this journey through life. It's no use asking, are we there yet? Or how much longer? On that highway to heaven, let's stop being distracted. Distracted drivers playing on their phones or gawking at the silly billboards of life. Let's focus on the road signs which Holy Mother Church is providing us in her doctrine and the advice of the saints who have traveled this road before us to the eternal destination in heaven. Let's not be stubborn drivers who, although they are really lost, insist that they know where they are going and they won't bother to stop and ask or listen for directions. On the roadway of life, make full use of your confessor or spiritual director. Be willing to consider the reminders and the good sense your spouse has been trying to tell you. Clear your mind of self-absorbing illusions. Focus instead on what your children, your colleagues, and your family members are saying about what they need from you. Instead of complaining, are we there yet? Let's make good use of the superabundant means of grace given to us by God through the church. Let's listen and watch for those people and signs which God's providence is putting into our lives. Then we can be confident that we will arrive safely at our destination before we know it. And so like the woman in the gospel who lost her coin and has to go looking for it, let's do some serious soul searching within us. Let's clean out the clutter and dispose of the distractions. Air out your soul with the fresh air of God's grace and eliminate your excuses about why you have no time to pray. This spiritual house cleaning will be easier if we focus constantly on the heavenly beatitude, which is our destination. Heavenly beatitude and the joyful company of the angels, our Lord tells us today. Instead of complaining, how much longer until we get there? Let's honestly ask ourselves, how could we possibly expect to obtain something so beautiful as heavenly beatitude at any less of a price? How can we possibly expect to receive so much and only give so little? So let's not be cheap. Let's not be stingy with giving our time and effort for God. When He is so very generous to provide us all the graces we need for our spiritual journey to heaven. And finally, no one goes to heaven alone. No one goes to hell alone. Like the Good Shepherd in today's Gospel. Go out, dear friends. It's up to you to go out and to seek to attract other people to Christ by the warmth of your hospitality, by the gentleness of your good example. When others see the mutual support which you offer to one another, when they see your examples of charity, then those souls will be touched. They will be inspired to join you in the church on this journey to the heavenly beatitude. So offer up your sacrifices and sufferings for the conversion and reversion of souls, just as someone most probably did for you years ago. Like St. Thomas More, and like so many other saintly laymen and women throughout Catholic history, that seek to promote the social royalty of Christ the King, planting good seeds in our conversations, asking intelligent questions of others to help them see through the thinly veiled fallacies of today's ideologies. Go the extra mile, help someone with their burden, lighten their load, Read and reflect on the writings of St. Francis de Sales. He will give you all the practical advice you need for living the truth and charity amid your daily words and actions. It's up to each and every one of us here 
to shake off spiritual mediocrity. Our children are great imitators, so let's give them something great to imitate. Together, as a spiritual family, in the Institute of Christ the King, let us be faithful, let us be generous with God and tasks little and great each day so that we can all be made worthy by grace to be reunited in that happy home of heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.